For the past three years, the patience of one billion people in China has been tested. It has grown thinner and thinner with every lockdown and round of mass COVID-19 testing. And now that patience has snapped. For the first time ever, President Xi Jinping is facing criticism of this nature, especially after winning an unprecedented third term. Could this be the tipping point as far as Xi Jinping's reign is concerned? Let's get you up to speed with the latest on the ground. Starting off with this apartment fire in the western city of Urumqi, this at first appeared to be an unlikely spark, but it paved the way for nationwide protests against China's draconian zero COVID policy. This deadly incident claimed the lives of 10 people and scared millions others who live in high rise apartments. The victims of the fire were unable to escape the roaring blaze. Why? Because of the strictly enforced COVID-19 lockdown there. Now this incident was the latest in a series of horror stories linked to the COVID-19 restrictions. Early on, reports surfaced of pregnant women losing their babies. Many old and vulnerable people died because of lack of timely access to medical care. Many lockdowns also seem to have the same stories regarding food and medicine shortages as the local authorities were struggling to cope with the demands. Slowly but steadily, more traumatic incidents started coming to light. A bus crash killed dozens of people who were being ferried to quarantine centers. Children died in the quarantine facilities. Many were hoping that there would be reprieve at the recent CPC Congress. But as it turns out, Xi Jinping only cemented his power. He made it clear that there would be no change to the zero COVID policy. And amid this chaos on the ground, Authorities did not realize that a unifying force was at play. Suffering due to these restrictions and dealing with loss together brought the residents closer and it bred anger in many corners of China from major cities to far-flung regions like Xinjiang. It galvanized every part of the society from university students to factory workers and middle-class families to the elite members Hundreds of factory workers, meanwhile, called for their rights. They were scuffling with the police personnel. By the time the Urumqi fire happened, the stage was set for widespread demonstrations. Hundreds took to the streets in Urumqi. Residents of Shanghai, Beijing, Wuhan, Chengdu also followed suit, calling for Xi Jinping and the CPC to step down. The protests have now spread to at least a dozen cities around the world. Small-scale vigils, demonstrations were held in London, Paris, Tokyo, Sydney. The gatherings are a rare instance of Chinese at home and abroad uniting in anger. Protests at such a large scale were previously unthinkable in China as the state heavily punishes and censors anyone who is critical of the ruling party. Analysts say that the demonstrations are a tipping point. They are seeing this as the first serious test to Xi Jinping's rule. And now the question that arises is, could the government listen to the protesters and withdraw zero COVID? It seems like a difficult feat due to the lack of effective domestic vaccines and also the government's adamant refusal to use foreign vaccines. China recently appeared to test waters by loosening the measures slightly. This included reducing some quarantine periods and avoiding arbitrary lockdowns. But the relaxation of, this me of these measures inevitably resulted in a spike in infections. And this is an outcome with the Chinese, uh, which the Chinese authorities still appear unwilling to accept. Many cities, including Beijing, once again turned to restrictions to tackle the fresh outbreaks. Meanwhile, the residents are also riddled with a lingering fear as they have been conditioned to see the virus as an enemy for the last three years. For some, this fear has now been replaced with anger, which is boiling over. Protesters are openly calling for freedom, demanding an end to the restrictions. But when and how that will happen still remains unclear. More on this, Adrian Jeju is joining us live from Hamburg. Adrian, thanks very much for being here. I want to first get in your assessment of the situation on the ground in China. The very fact that protests on the ground are extremely rare, but at the same time, we have these images of uh, the anger on the ground, which is only mounting. 
what is the likelihood that Xi Jinping will actually pay heed to the demand of the protesters on the ground because he remains adamant First, and insists say, that the policy is working. You're absolutely right. This is new for China. I mean, as a correspondent in China for uh, many years, uh, I uh, witnessed it, uh, protests before, but this was different. This had been local conflicts and the people always said, OK, uh, the local officials are corrupt, but uh, the central government is good. And this now directed against the central government, asking Xi Jinping to step down, asking the Communist Party to step down. This is an absolutely new step. And this uh, will make Xi Jinping very nervous because that's what he always was afraid of, that the uh, protests don't... Uh, um, be only about the local things or about uh, lifting a lockdown in a house or something, but that the uh, people question uh, the whole uh, system. This is really a new quality. Why is the Chinese leader so adamant on sticking on to the zero COVID policy? Is it just about uh, staying rigid and uh, not accepting that it has failed? Uh, because uh, China's policy overall, also when it comes to using homegrown vaccines and not using foreign vaccines, has also clearly backfired. Absolutely. So this is a very good question. And one point is Xi Jinping's uh, nationalism, so that he did not want to use uh, the foreign vaccines like uh, uh, BioNTech Pfizer, for example. Uh, second point is that he also uses the lockdowns to control the people, to isolate the country. He always was suspicious about foreign influence in China, and this was a good chance for him to lock down the country by uh, nearly it's impossible to travel to uh, China now, with the exception of some few specialists. And the third point is he has sticked so long now uh, with his zero COVID policy. If he would admit now this was a big mistake, he would completely lose face and the people uh, would lose any belief uh, into the Communist Party and into Xi Jinping himself. So that's also uh, what makes it difficult for him to, uh, to change uh, his mind and to uh, admit his mistakes. Adrian, we're leaving it there for the moment, but thanks very much for being here on the broadcast. We are now available in your country. Download the app now. Get all the news on the move.